Welcome to the Rewriting Naruto series part 25. This is a series of videos where I rewrite Naruto, making changes to improve the story from your personal taste. This is only part 25 of a very long series, so definitely subscribe so you never miss any future videos. And like this video to support the channel and this series. The goal is gonna be 1500 likes. If we get to 1500 within the first 24 hours, I'll drop the next rewrite within a week. An army of Naruto Shadow Clones clashes with the four Onimas figures in a more open section of the crystal cave. A fearsome taijutsu exchange ensues, the Naruto clones outnumbering and surrounding the Yonimas figures will use simple yet fast and precise attacks to fend off the Naruto clones that attack from every direction. The two fighters study each other, Naruto using his shadow clones to learn the patterns of the Yonimas figures moves. The Yonimas figure destroys some of the clones, about half of the small army, however Naruto manages to take out the three Yonimas figure shadow clones and now now about 50 Naruto clones swarm on the original Onimas figure, who is now swinging taijutsu combos in succession, trying to fend off an overwhelming number of clones that come from all sides. Three of the Naruto clones weave hand signs saying, Wind style! Great wind schism! Spitting powerful gusts of air and forcing the Onimas figure to dodge, jumping away. Ten Naruto shadow clones come from behind, but the Onimas figure perceives them, turns around and manages to take out five of them in a flurry of taijutsu. But there's just too many of them. They manage to grapple the figure, and a clone lands a massive kick to the Onimas figure's stomach, who is sent flying dozens of paces away. The figure lands on his feet, seemingly unharmed. Naruto has about 20 clones left. He stares at the Onimas figure, thinking, That last kick was weird. My clone definitely hit something, but when I looked at it, it was as though he didn't touch the guy. The Onimas figure says, You've gotten faster, Naruto. I must say, I wasn't expecting you to put up any resistance resistance at all. Naruto thinks, this bastard, he thinks he's so cool. Still, I better always have some of my clones around me so this guy can come from behind and hit me like he did before. And what he did to me, I never thought I would feel this way, but it's eerie not to feel the presence of the Ninetales. The Onimas figure says, you're probably wondering how is it possible to cut the connection with the Ninetales. Naruto looks at him in surprise, feeling as though his mind was red. You're not the only only one who knows exotic ninjutsu. Why don't you shut your mouth? Naruto creates a hundred more shadow clones on top of the 20 he already had, thinking, my kick wasn't good enough. Let's see how this guy handles our Rasengan. I just need an opening. The army of clones dash towards the figure weaving hand signs, and the figure weaves hand signs as well. The Naruto clones spit a massive barrage of wind bullets. The Onimas figure doesn't even attempt to dodge, and they simply impact him, causing a shockwave to erupt within the cave, lifting dust and cracking crystals all around. The clones continue to dash towards the Onimas figure. From within the smoke, a figure says, Lightning style, electric paradise! The ground of the cavern ignites in lightning, taking out dozens upon dozens of shadow clones. The real Naruto is behind the army of clones says, Oh screw that! He jumps up, narrowly avoiding the lightning and lands on the cavern wall concentrating chakra on his feet to walk on it and begins to weave hand signs. The dust clears and the Onimas figure remains on the same spot. Naruto is taken aback upon seeing that the wind bullets did absolutely no damage. He says, That was far from being my strongest attack! Wind style! Wind dragon! A massive wind dragon erupts from Naruto's palms as he stands on the cavern wall. Lightning style! Lightning dragon! A massive lightning dragon erupts from the Onimas figure's hands and strikes towards Naruto's wind dragon. The two dragons collide, biting each other. A shockwave of air and lightning hits the cavern all around them. The two dragons attempt to force their way through each other as Naruto and the Onimas figure keep their hands raised, expelling a consistent flow of wind and lightning respectively. Sakura runs through the crystal cave. She begins to hear subtle vibrations that echo around her. She then kneels down and touches her ear on the cave wall, concentrating and trying to find out where the faint vibrations are coming from. She finally identifies the general 
location and begins to run that way, faster than she was before. The air gets ionized inside of the cave as the two dragons continue to clash. Naruto growls an effort, putting everything he has into the wind dragon, but even still, the lightning dragon is pushing back at the wind dragon. Naruto then remembers the first time he successfully used wind style, after Kurutsuchi's lesson. He centers himself, closing his eyes and thinks about Ichiraku. He's eating delicious ramen, and next to him is Hinata, eating and laughing at a bad joke he made. Naruto opens his eyes and says, You know what, you weirdo? Wind is strong against lightning! The wind dragon gains a massive boost, carving through the lightning and destroying it. The lightning beast unravels and the wind dragon impacts the ground, narrowly missing the Onimes figure who manages to dodge. Naruto runs on the roof of the cavern directly above the Onimes figure. He wields a spinny Huma shuriken that he tosses straight at the Onimes figure below. Naruto and the figure weave hand signs at the same time. Shuriken Shadow Clown Jutsu! The single flying Huma shuriken turns into dozens. The Onimes figure is forced to dodge them all with insane agility, finishing his hand signs. The dozens of shurikens that land all around the Onimes figure turn into Naruto shadow clones that dash towards the Onimes figure and they weave hand seals as well. However, the Onimes figure finishes the signs first. Lightning style, dancing lights! Several orbs of lightning erupt from the Onimes figure's body, streaking towards the dashing Naruto clones. Several of them are hit by the orbs, being dispelled instantly. However, some manage to dodge and reach the Onimes figure. The real Naruto who stands on the roof directly above charges a Rasengan, aided by another clone. The clones below engage the Onimes figure, who weaves hand signs saying, Lightning style, electric ray! A lightning bolt explodes from the Onimes figure's fingers, and the figure swings his arm, turning the lightning bolt into a whip, hitting several of the clones. Two of them, however, manage to dodge and finish their hand signs, touching the Onimes figure, saying, Ninja art! Acute paralysis! Ceiling signs leap from the two clones' hands and envelop the Onimes figure. For a fleeting instant, he cannot move. Up above on the roof, the Naruto clone uses a gale palm to send the real Naruto down. Carrying a Rasengan, Naruto travels through the air with insane speed and lands the Rasengan square on the paralyzed Onimas figure. His two clones on the ground are instantly destroyed as the Rasengan explodes the ground around them in the cave. Naruto shoves his Rasengan against the Onimas figure's chest who's laying down, pinned down by Naruto and unable to move as Naruto stands atop in the middle of the crater. However, now Naruto gets confirmation. It's as though the Rasengan hits an invisible wall that protects the Onimas figure's body. Even though the kinetic impact was felt, the Rasengan didn't actually touch the Onimas figure. Naruto tries to force the Rasengan past the invisible wall and he begins to carve through it slowly. The Onimas figure then regains his movements as the ceiling jutsu fades away and swings his arm at Naruto, his fingers enveloped in purple chakra. Wind style! Power vacuum! The clone on the roof swallows a massive amount of air, creating a vacuum that pulls up the real Naruto, dodging the Onimas figure's attack coming from below. The Onimas figure uses that chance to get up and jump back as the Naruto clone lands on the ground, jumping back and looking behind the real Naruto to avoid any sneak attacks. Naruto thinks, yeah, definitely some type of barrier around this guy's body. And even my Rasengan only got a little bit through it. Though, I touched him using the ceiling jutsu, so he probably has to activate it somehow. Still, this bastard is so slick. Somehow he knew I transformed a clone into a Huma shuriken on the roof after the wind dragon hit. And he predicted that I would use a fake shuriken shadow clone Jutsu, but instead used a real Shadow Clone Jutsu on them. He weaved hand signs to counter the clones even before I multiply the shurikens. He's probably really smart. Should I try to run and find Sakura and Neji? No. This place looks like a maze. Who knows where they are? I have to deal with this guy right now. But if the Rasengan did work, do I have to use the Rasen Shuriken? Naruto remembers Sakura telling him that he could lose the ability to mold Chakra if he used the Rasen Shuriken again. Naruto scowls in frustration. The Onimas figure says, Jutsu. I didn't know you were capable of doing that. Naruto is taken aback. What do you know about me? I know everything about you, Naruto. My duty is to protect you and the Nine Tails. Naruto gets outraged. Protect me? Doesn't seem like it. Besides, I don't need your protection, you weirdo. The Onimas figure clenches his right fist. You're making this much harder than it needs to 
be. Surrender. Naruto smiles in derision and says, Now oh, just get ready. This is gonna get much harder for you. Naruto bites his thumb and weaves hand signs. Summoning Jutsu! Kabuto and Neji stare at the red-haired woman in the middle of the chamber. She smiles at them with a crazy expression, beginning to imbue two bugs that were crawling around the cave with chakra. The bugs almost instantly grow in size, turning into ferocious beasts of chakra. One of them dashes at Kabuto, the other dashes at Neji. They begin to fight against the beasts, Kabuto dodging and using his scalpels, Neji jumping around and using air palms, striking the creature with them. The massive bug gets knocked back by the air palm and Neji uses that chance to blitz the creature and assume his stance. 8 trigrams, 64 palms. He unleashes a gentle fist barrage, finishing off the creature, its weird chakra evaporating as a regular bug appears in its place. The red-haired lady looks at Neji in disgust, saying, I sense Arima's foul chakra in you. You deserve to die. A beam of powerful chakra erupts in the air in front of the red-haired lady, streaking towards Neji, making an unearthly sound that sends shiver through Neji's spine. He has no idea what she's talking about, but nevertheless, he doesn't think it's wise to just stay put while the beam of energy hits him. Neji begins a furious rotation. The beam impacts the rotation chakra shield. Secondary beams shoot to all directions, but Neji manages to block it. He has to maintain the rotation at maximum speed and chakra levels, however, because the lady is not letting up the chakra beam. Kabuto manages to destroy the beast he was facing, assaulting him with several hits from the chakra scalpels. He then sees the lady completely distracted by Neji, with an unhinged smile, attempting to destroy him. Kabuto uses that chance to rush the woman, grasping one of the daggers stabbing her body and trying to yank it out. The dagger doesn't budge at all. The lady then diverts her attention and stops beaming Neji. A chakra shockwave then explodes from around her body and hits Kabuto, sending him flying with great speed, impacting the chamber wall with force. But he begins to heal as soon as he stands up, thinking, It seems simply pulling them out is impossible. The only way to do it is to kill the host. Gamakichi appears as Naruto stands on top of him. He says, Hey, Naruto! What's the deal today? That weirdo in the mask. We have to take care of him. You can sense air vibrations, right? He's very stealthy, so make sure he doesn't sneak up behind us. Gamakichi nods. Use your jumps and leap around the cave. I'm gonna need an opening. And he already knows my ceiling jutsu. You got it, Naruto! Gamakichi jumps up, weaving hand signs in conjunction with Naruto. Water style! Great water jet! Wind style! Great wind schism! Gamakichi spits a fast, thick jet of water as Naruto spits a powerful gust of air. They both say, Tempest of Toes! The water and the air mix together, turning into a single powerful jet. The Oni mass figure narrowly evades the jet and begins to weave hand signs. Gamakichi lands on the roof and immediately jumps forward, dashing at the Onimas figure. Naruto weaves the Shadow Clone hand seal, still on the toad's back. Electric Ray! The Onimas figure shoots a lightning bolt, aiming for Gamakichi, but an army of Naruto Shadow Clones manifests itself around them mid-air, several clones appearing in front of the toad, taking the lightning bolt and being destroyed so that Gamakichi is not. The Shadow Clone army shoots hundreds of wind bullets towards the Onimas figure, who's still on the ground, and dodges them. When Whenever he gets hit by one, the strange invisible barrier completely blocks the wind bullets. The ground of the cavern is completely pelted by them. But then, the clones and Gamakichi reach the Onimas figure, who once more ignites the ground in lightning, destroying the army of clones and forcing Gamakichi to jump up and avoid the electricity. The figure continues to shoot lightning bolts, aiming for Gamakichi, who jumps around the cavern walls, floor, roof to avoid them. Gamakichi says, What's your plan, Naruto? Long distance doesn't seem to work on this guy and your clones can get close! I need an opening to hit him with melee! Could you stop him with your tongue? Gamakichi says, still dodging the lightning bolts. Unlikely! This guy is fast and if he hits my tongue with lightning, it will go numb and become useless! Naruto growls. Gamakichi then remembers something. Naruto, you could use Lord Jiraiya's jutsu! We are in a closed space! It will be perfect! Naruto's face drops. I've never had any luck with a giant toad! Pervy Sage tried to teach me to summon him, but it's not like he's summoning 
and you are Chief Toad. He can refuse to come. Yeah, that is true. Lord Uriah was the only human who was ever able to summon him, but I am not a human. If we both summon him at the same time, in the same place, maybe he'll be persuaded. Naruto nods. Can you seal off the cavern around us? Kamakichi weaves hand signs. Earth style! Mud ball! He spits five large orbs of mud, hitting the five tunnel exits around the larger cavern they're in right now. The Onimas figure says, What is your plan, Naruto? You may jump around avoiding my jutsus with that toad, but the summoning time will eventually run out. You cannot defeat me, Naruto says. Just you watch me, you masked weirdo. Shadow clone jutsu! Naruto creates two shadow clones. They also stand on Gamakichi's back. Gamakichi says, When we finish weaving hand signs, we have to touch the surface to complete the summon. That will leave us vulnerable for an instant. Naruto says, When that happens, he will shoot you with a lightning bolt. He doesn't want to kill me, so when the summon is complete, I want you to bamf out of here. Gamakichi nods. Naruto nods back. Naruto and his clones jump off Gamakichi's back as they are heading towards the ground of the cavern. Gamakichi and Naruto weave the same hand signs simultaneously. They land and touch their hands on the ground saying, Summoning art! Toad Summon Trap! The thick muscles of the rock-dwelling giant toad of Mao Miyoboku appear around the entire cavern structure. At the same time, the only mass figure shoots a lightning bolt towards Gamakichi. A split second before the bolt hits him, Gamakichi unsummons himself and the bolt cruises through white smoke, hitting the muscle wall on the other side of the cavern. Naruto smiles, looking at the changed terrain and says, Mr. Big Toad, can you help me out restrain that weird in the mask? It's urgent! Naruto stares at the Onimas figure. He's apprehensive. Nothing happens. The Onimas figure then says, Can you surrender now? Your jutsu didn't work. It is over. The frog stomach erupts into motion, thick layers of stomach dash at the Onimas figure as his feet sink into the stomach, immobilizing him. The Onimas figure bursts Chakra out of his feet, freeing himself and dodging the incoming muscles in the nick of time. The stomach chases after the Onimas figure relentlessly as the figure uses lightning-style kunais with paper bombs and taijutsu to evade and counterattack the thick muscles. His moves are insanely fast, but there is nowhere to escape. The stomach is beginning to overpower him him. Naruto says, according to Pervy Sage, no one has ever escaped this jutsu. He then thinks, except for Itachi and that shark dude, I guess. The Onimas figure shoots three massive lightning dragons at the stomach walls. They do some damage, causing large electric explosions, but the wall is nowhere near destroyed, and the stomach still chases after him with unyielding determination. With the assistance of his two clones, Naruto begins to form a white Rasengan. The Onimas figure who's dodging the stomach, a Abruptly looks at what Naruto is doing. In that moment of distraction, a part of the stomach hits the figure square on the head, sending him flying. The mask has been cracked. The cracks are leaking a strange red chakra. He lands on his feet and continues to dodge. However, his movement seems slower. Naruto looks at that thinking, Well, this is not the Rasen Shuriken, but it's more powerful than the normal Rasengan. I hope it works. Wind style! Rasengan! A white Rasengan that emits a loud high-pitched sound is completely formed in Naruto's hand. Naruto dashes towards the Onimas figure who's being overwhelmed and hit from all sides by the stomach. The initial blow to his head discombobulated him and his movements became sloppier. The stomach muscles grab the Onimas figure. He tries to free himself, wailing desperately but it's too much. All his limbs are grappled and paralyzed by the stomach. Naruto gets within reach saying, TAKE THIS! He lands the wind Rasen on the figure's stomach, impacting the invisible shield with amazing force. Naruto doesn't let up. With a figure mobilized, he forces the wind-style Rasengan through it and touches the Onimas figure's stomach with it, who growls in pain. The Rasengan erupts, sending the Onimas figure flying and crashing against the opposite wall with violence. Falling to the ground face up, a section of the figure's cloak was destroyed by the Rasengan, exposing the figure's stomach that is very wounded. Naruto says, Thanks, Big Toad. I owe you one. The stomach enveloping the cavern fades away, and Gamakichi's mud that was blocking the exits begins to fall to the ground. Naruto looks at the Onimas figure lying on the ground. He is not moving whatsoever, and the mask is leaking that red chakra. Naruto thinks, that's really creepy. But now let's find out who you really are. Naruto weaves hand signs, spitting three wind bullets that hit the red cracking mask. The mask breaks. The red chakra explodes 
expands and forms a cloud of dust that obscures the figure's face. Naruto tenses up, taking a battle stance. His two clones do so as well. He doesn't approach the figure, fearful of some trap. The dust finally settles, and Naruto sees the face of... Watch part 26 of the rewrite right here. Like this video so we can reach the like goal and subscribe to this channel if you haven't done so already. Comment down below what you thought about this episode, and thank you so much for watching.